Hello sir, what do you think of this video so far? When Gladys is finished, where will I start from? Where will I have the boat taken to? So that's how the water goes from this side into the lock to fill the lock. I'll see you next time and the next video should be a special one because I'm going back up to Aintree Boats. Well you may remember this place, this is uh, Brecon Basin which is either the start or the end of the Monmouthshire and Brecon Canal whichever way you look at it I suppose and I was here about a year ago I think when I started my walk along the canal the reason I've come here today is because when I looked on the CRT's website for winter work and stoppages it suggested that there was some work being done here at Brecon Basin and so I anticipated that possibly the, uh, the water would have been drained or there would have been some work going on which I could have filmed but that's not the case uh, everything looks quite normal here's the dragonfly pleasure boat tied up for the winter and these are called day boats I did notice as I drove into Brecon that the canal looked quite low further down so I'm going to take a walk out of the basin now and see what I can find and maybe there are some works going on further down so I've uh, got my cup of coffee and uh, it's quite cold and quite blowy so I'm glad about this and uh, I'm going to take a walk down the canal now and see what, what I can find and you've ducks around I haven't seen any swans yet today but who knows fingers crossed uh, could be in luck well uh, yeah so as I approach this bridge I can see that the canal is actually stopped off and um, some quite extensive work going on by the looks of it it's amazing to think that all this water here is being held back by a series of planks here the result is that the canal looks like this So they've built another temporary dam there in order to allow this water to at least remain to some extent for the canal. See the ducks are all enjoying it. It gives you an idea of just how shallow the uh, canal is even at the best of times. When you look at that wall over there you can see where the water mark usually goes up to and if you imagine that a narrow boat often has a draft of about two feet that's how easy it is that you can kind of run aground when two boats are trying to cross each other and down on this side there's quite a lot of large stones as well which generally would be underwater which you wouldn't see when you were driving your boat but you'd certainly know about it when you uh, when you went over them I was watching some video uh, last night of the Gloucester and Sharpness Canal which uh, I've visited uh, but some other people have uh, videoed the whole thing and what a contrast between that this is really super wide and deep and this look at this isn't this absolutely wonderful made out of wood hello sir what do you think of this video so far rubbish mm. okay. I don't suppose you'd be interested in subscribing booger off hmm. okay fair enough can't win them all so apparently this place is called Watton Wharf and it was once the longest railway in the world that's quite hard to believe but uh, if you read the information it does, it does say that there's quite a lot of clearing work will have to be done to the canal 
can see lots of branches and such like have come down in the winds I suppose I have to try and get them out before narrow boats start coming up and down because if you get that stuff caught in your propeller then you're in a world of hurt Here we are, one and a quarter miles to uh, Brinic and the lock Right, so uh, a little bit like what happened at uh, Worcester Foregate Street Station last week So far I've encountered quite a lot of people running or walking their dogs which has made it a little bit off-putting to uh, be holding this thing up in front of my face and apparently talking to myself but it looks a bit quieter now can't see anybody coming for a while so I'm a little bit disappointed today if I'm honest uh, two reasons firstly I looked on the CRT's website and it said about a closure at Brecon Basin for maintenance and I wrongly anticipated that that meant the, the basin would be closed off and possibly drained because it said about fixing leaks and as you saw the basin has not been drained in fact there's nothing really happening in the, in the basin itself just a little bit further down so I'm a bit disappointed because it would have been really interesting to see what it looked like drained the water the other reason I'm disappointed is uh, I had fully intended bringing the Brompton out today at last and uh, pumped the tyres up yesterday checked it all over got all my cycling stuff ready I uh, even dug this out this orange snood uh, thank, you for jo thank you John for telling me what it's called and, uh, and then I looked at the weather forecast which had been saying a fine day and yesterday that it changed to uh, rain for Brecon pretty much all day and being uh, a wimp as I am and because I can't stand getting my bike wet and dirty I decided to leave it at home this morning and do all this by walk, walking instead and as it turns out I think I probably could have brought the bike because the towpath isn't too bad um, yeah, it's not muddy is it? Not yet anyway, and uh, I think I'd have been okay. It is a little bit windy. From time to time there's been quite a gust. Um, but I'd have been okay on the Brompton today. I really must get out on it soon. I really must. Again, look how shallow the canal actually is. Even when it's full, it's only up to there. A lot of people are very surprised when they see that. A lot of people think canals are very, very deep. But usually it's only three, four, three or four feet. So this is bridge 164A, which means there's also a 164 and this was built subsequently this is the A40 road bridge so the A40 Brecon bypass goes over here and that would be the way towards West Wales if you were going to West Wales if you remember or if you watched my video of about a year ago I think when I first came here the canal was stopped off at this point so you can see the, the wooden planks are dropped down the guides and form a watertight seal. Uh, so this spot's a good example of uh, what you find sometimes. You can see that most of the water is gathering towards this side of the canal. And so if you had two boats trying to pass each other, the one coming up, which would be on the right, so you always pass on the right on a canal or you're supposed to anyway 
you can see how easily a boat could go aground if you moved over onto that lot the boat on this side would probably have a lot more depth so very easy to go aground on this canal and I can say that from personal experience a number of times when I've come up here but normally it's not that difficult to get off the mud it takes a little bit longer sometimes than others but usually uh, you manage all right in the end there's another nasty stone over there you could easily easily uh, grind your boat on that yeah there's another significant obstructions can have to be moved out the way came down in the winds recently I expect I still wonder at the fantastic stonework on these old bridges it's incredible just look at that they were all built without the benefit of modern tools it was just by sheer hard labor and skill there are lots and lots of uh, tracks in the mud that I've seen on the other side uh, I don't know what what made them could be lots of things I suppose and I can't get close enough to really see of course a lot of people wonder where the water comes from to fill the canals you know they don't just fill themselves and in many cases the water comes from a nearby river and in the case of the Monmouth and Brecon Canal it comes from this river this is the river Ask and Brecon is a more or less two miles up that way and uh, that's where the uh, the water comes from they take it, some of it from the river goes into the canal and they follow each other for quite a long way yeah do you know what I'm really annoyed about not bringing the Brompton uh, this would have been absolutely fine for me it's slightly damp in the air but hardly anything to be honest I think I might write to the BBC and complain about their bloody awful weather forecast hmm I shall do that when I get back home come up towards Brinick Lock now a uh, place I know quite well and I'm gonna see if there's any work going on there and then I'm gonna stroll down to the aqueduct and uh, I think that'll be far enough for today need to change my batteries as soon as I or my battery rather as soon as I get to the lock because I can see I haven't got much left now so here I am made it to Brinick lock started up there at the basin come this far Wow, I'm ready for something to eat. Hope you're enjoying this video, uh, this little walk along the Monmouthshire and Bracken Canal. Uh, if you are enjoying it, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube and uh, leave a comment. Uh, many thanks to everyone who regularly leave comments. Uh, that's absolutely great. I really appreciate that. Thank you guys. You know who you are. But uh, yeah, feel free to leave comments and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, it means a lot to me and I'm very, very grateful to those people who have subscribed so far. There's over 550 of you now. I'd love to get to a thousand. If I get to a thousand, it's possible YouTube will actually give me a little bit of money um, by virtue of the ads which appear um, alongside the video. It will be a very little amount of money, so I, I'm not in this to make a fortune. But it would be nice to get to that uh, thousand subscriber mark. So please think of doing so and pass on details of the channel to your family and friends. That would be great. 
So that's really interesting. You can see the paddle opposite, black and white, and it's fully open. And the paddle is raised. And in normal circumstances, it would be raised like that when you were going to fill the lock. So that's how the water goes from this side into the lock to fill the lock. And there's a similar paddle just in front of me on this side as well. I've never actually had a good view of uh, one of the paddles. That's called a ground paddle. The other type of paddle is actually built into the gates themselves. That's a gate paddle. Yeah, I'm really glad I've seen that. It's quite large, isn't it? You can imagine how much water would flow through that if the canal was actually full on this side. So the Monmouthshire and Brecon Canal, um, often known as the Mon and Breck, is uh, pretty much unique in as much as when you exit one of the locks you are supposed to leave the bottom gates open like this. So these gates are open on most other canals, certainly every one I've ever been on you are to leave the gates shut. So wherever you've gone up or down, you leave the gates shut. Also a bit different on this lock, the gate paddles, that's the ones which are actually built into the, the doors or the gates themselves. You wind them up and down using a hydraulic system. So you put your windlass on the spindle there so rather than a ratchet system, which is often the case, this has got a hydraulic one. Doesn't mean it's any easier, mind. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But these are the kind of things you'd see on a, a lift bridge as well. A hydraulic mechanism. This is bridge 163, which is immediately before Brinick Lock. couple of boats tied up down here. The canal is uh, its not full, not by any means full. You can see the banks are still exposed over there, but it's deep enough for these boats to stay where they are. I imagine these boats normally would have been moored up in the basin and they moved them down here when they knew about the, uh, the work that was going on. It's quite a sharp bend coming up now and then we'll be at the aqueduct, which takes the canal over the river Ask. Yeah, there you go. Brinick Aqueduct completed in 1800. I mean, that's just crazy. 224 years ago that this was built. Isn't it just astonishing? And look at it. It's as solid as a rock. 25 feet the canal is above the river Ask below. All built with manual labour. It's just astonishing. I'm going to turn by here uh, and start making my way back now I think. Uh, it isn't raining but it feels like there's rain in the air, so maybe I should take back what I've said about the weather forecasters. But I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't rain. There's not a lot of things do surprise me anymore. When you've been around as long as I have. And that's a lot longer than you might think. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of rain in the air. Maybe a light drizzle. So uh, a lot of people have asked me um, when Gladys is finished, where will I start from? Where will I have the boat taken to? And I haven't really decided even yet, but um, it won't be this canal, much as I love this canal, because uh, it's the nearest canal to where I used to live and I know it very well. But unfortunately, this canal doesn't join any other canal. 
So if if I have gliders put on this one, then all I can ever do is go up and down from Brecon to Cumbran. And nice as that is, it could get a bit boring. So it won't be this canal. My thinking at the moment, um, the most likely place would be the either the Langockland Canal or the Middlewich branch, which is a canal that joins the Shropshire Union and the Trent and Mersey. It's getting quite windy now, I feel my hat's starting to take off. So good thing I didn't wear a baseball hat or it would be in the drink by now. So it'd be one of those two I think. Much will depend on what time of the year I get the boat. If it goes as long as the middle of the summer, uh, which I hope it doesn't, uh, then I very much doubt I'd go on the Langochland because that's going to be very, very busy then. But we just have to see. I just don't know at the moment. Um, I have to pay for her to be moved. Basically, uh, some guys will come with a, a big lorry and she'll be lifted onto the back and driven to the marina of my choice. Uh, it's not a cheap exercise as you can imagine but I knew that when I decided to buy the boat. Uh, eventually in the, in the fullness of time it's possible I might have Gladys lifted out again and uh, brought to this canal because I do like this canal very much. It's close to where I used to live for a long time for most of my life and it's so pretty and it's not far from uh, where I'm living now. So there's all kinds of possibilities would, uh, would arise then. Yeah, so it's quite possible I could end up, uh, Gladys could end up on this canal uh, one day in the future. And that would be really nice. Uh, I'd be very happy with that. It's starting to rain a little bit now on the way back. So, uh, Maybe it wasn't such a bad thing to leave the Brompton at home. I really can't stand cleaning the bike. Now there's a nice view of the profile of the canal. You can see how it curves down towards the middle. So if you can, that's why you always try and keep the boat in the middle. Because it really is very shallow on the edges. I've made it back to Brecon Basin, safe and sound. The rain has held off, more or less. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, do give it a like if you did. If you did like it, leave a comment and think about subscribing. Of course, please. That would be really nice. I'll see you next time, and the next video should be a special one because I'm going back up to Aintree Boats on Monday the 12th. Uh, to see Gladys, now she's in the fit-out shed with her spanking new coat of paint so see what else they've done to her since I went there last so I'm really looking forward to that and I hope you will too and I'll see you then meantime thanks for watching and all the best bye